What's up beautiful people, today we're going to be checking out another video of Thomas Sowell sharing knowledge and also shaking tables like he always does. Let's get to it. Economic progress, I'm quoting you. Despite the grand myth that black economic progress began or accelerated with the passage of the civil rights laws and the war on poverty programs of the 1960s, the fact is that the poverty rate among blacks fell from 87% in 1940 to 47% in 1960. But over the next 20 years, the poverty rate among blacks fell another 18 percentage points. This was just the continuation of, pre of a previous economic trend, but at a slower rate of progress. It was not some grand deliverance, close quote. That is so counter to what we are taught in school, what appears on the editorial pages of newspapers. Right. <laughs> that I have, I feel as though I want to ask you. You really want to stick with that that, that assertion? <laughs> well, I, 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 I have more evidence in, in my most most recent book, uh, "Discrimination and Disparities." Uh, I point out that this really is a pattern not peculiar to blacks or even to the United States. That you can see the same thing in England. You can see it in any number of other countries. That the poor were, were, were much worse off economically. Let's say in the first half of the twentieth century, and yet. They, in terms of their own behavior, they were they were they had they were far more decent uh, societies, uh, and and afterwards after after this welfare state that's supposed to make them better off and and, and better human beings, that's when the crime rate skyrocketed, on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, the British were, no, were famous for being perhaps the most polite, considerate society uh, in the world. Prior to that, uh, after that, you get things like the 2011 riots over there, went right. through London, Manchester, where they where they're going through this. They 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 anticipated Ferguson uh, and uh, and uh, Baltimore by a few years, and the same thing is the the, the burning down of, of, of buildings, the throwing of gasoline bombs, at pol the whole schmear, uh, and none of those people were descendants of slaves. So so that. Poor people were doing, if the, the lesson of the 20th century is something like poor people, including in this country, African Americans, were improving their lot and leading fundamentally decent lives until the government decided to help. To them. help, yeah. Welfare, uh, can you so much related this to welfare, the welfare system, something like that? And also the fatherhood thing where the government would subsidize families that had no fathers. And you know how it goes. When you subsidize something, you basically enhance it. Yeah, yes, that's a, that's a fair statement. Well, they're, they're, by the way, they're, they're better off case, not every case. Uh, 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 economically because of all, what's been given. Right. But of course, when you when you have the crime rate, I mean, I, I got I got the first inkling of this some years back when I was uh, uh, at some school in Harlem doing some research, and I had looked out the window and I mentioned in passing that when I was a little kid, I used to walk my dog in that park. And looks of horror came over the students' faces. Nobody in his right mind would have a child going to that park, hmm. walking a dog or not. The principal was warning these students not to cross this park, which is about a block and a half wide, uh, even in groups of six. Uh, and, when I, and, and when I tell them about how in these hot summer nights I would sleep out on the fire escapes in Harlem, they looked at me like I was a man from Mars. People were doing that all over New York. They were doing it in Philadelphia, Washington, wherever I've known people. That was a common thing for poor people. We didn't have the money for air conditioning. Right. You slept out on, on the fire escape or in the parks. Where Walter grew up in a... In a Walter, we did that too in Nigeria. We slept outside. because it was We didn't have electricity. We didn't have power. Williams. Uh, Walter Williams grew up in a... Uh, a housing project in Philadelphia. He was saying on the hot summer nights, the people would be in this project would have, have little balconies. They'd sleep out on the balconies. Mm -hmm. And the ones on the first floor who didn't have balconies would sleep out in the yard. And that there were old men who would, you could see sit on a hot summer night sitting outdoors into the wee hours playing cards or, uh, or checkers or whatever. It was a different world. Mm. It was and a the safe world. The, and it was infinitely safer. Now, what about family structure, Tom? Again, I'm quoting you. Most black children were being raised in two-parent families in 1960. 30 years after the liberal welfare state, the great majority of black children... I haven't seen this video before, 
but I, I just called that too. Yeah, maybe Candice Owens had seen this video and that's why she spoke about it because I, I took that thing from Candice Owens, what I just said. Being raised in two parent families in 1960, 30 years after the liberal welfare state, the great majority of black children were being raised by single parents. Yes. How, what, what, what's the, what, how does that, by the okay. way, we should, we should note that Pat Moynihan, Patrick Moynihan publishes the Moynihan Report in 1965. Yes. And he's alarmed because the uh, illegitimacy rate among black families mm. is 25% then. Now, among whites, it's over a third. Yes. Hispanics, it's over half. And among African Americans, it's over 70%. What's going on there? Well, this is again, this too, you find the same thing in Britain. You find it in uh, France and Norway. You find it in the Western world. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the dissolution any, of the family structure. Oh yeah, there are any number of, of uh, Western nations where forty percent of the children are, uh, are raised with with only one parent. Right. Uh, at the extremes, uh, I, I, I compared to uh, Asian uh, countries, uh, at the extremes, uh, Iceland, it's uh, two out of three uh, children born are raised in single parent home. Uh, in South Korea, it's one out of sixty six. Wow. Wow. That's a <laughs> big margin. And so, what, that's the welfare state? What, yes. It is. Oh, you, you, you're paying, you, you, you're creating a situation where if the, if the uh, first of all, the, the, you, well, you're, cre you're creating a situation where if the man stays there, the, the government will not give, them, give the woman welfare. Uh, and if he leaves, he, he, uh, it will. And so they're, pay, they're paying, they're, when you pay people not to get married, more people don't get married. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. You subsidize, you enhance. So, so what would have happened if Lyndon Johnson, instead of becoming a liberal, had remained a crusty, tough, skeptical <laughs> Texas, t Texas conservative, yes. which is certainly the way he started his career. Mm -hmm. if, he, if Lyndon Johnson had embraced the constrained vision, instead of instituting the war on poverty and the great society and so forth, what would the country look like today? A lot better. You, you would not have the same rates of crime and so on. Because, you see, you can't have a welfare state in a democratic country unless you first have a welfare state vision. And when you buy all the assumptions of that vision, then you're buying a lot of trouble. One of the, one of the episodes I think epitomized, it was in France in this case, uh, that there were attacks, knife attacks by various people from North Africa against Chinese people in, uh, in some suburb of Paris. And one of the, the, the things that uh, the attackers said, you know, that uh, why, why are you attacking the Chinese? And it wasn't because of anything the Chinese had done to them. He said, they have nice clothes and big cars. That's not fair. Hmm. I mean, that's, you know, uh, egalitarianism as a philosophy is one thing, but the actual consequences of it uh, uh, mean things like uh, resenting other people's good fortune. Right. Mm -hmm. That was another very good video by Thomas Sowell. He never fails to drop wisdom on us and also shake tables while doing that. And I think everything he said is very valid, very, very valid. We've seen those happen around the world as well. We've seen even in Nigeria, even in Africa, when you try to push um, any kind of welfare, especially people don't do anything anymore and they sit back to take this welfare and they get bored, they get introduced into vices. I mean, besides the divorce rates that it enhances, you know, amongst the, the poor community, besides that, it also promotes vices because people are bored when they're just receiving and not working for it. Well, let me know what you think about that. Feel free to share your thoughts on that. It's the end of this one. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a wonderful day. Peace. I'm gonna hate this bit on my own.